from the River Thames to London Wall, from Temple Bar to Olgert Pump, a city but one square mile. city as young as each new morning, yet endowed with a wisdom that only comes with age. Beneath the monument, the barrows rattle in Billingsgate. Early markets, the first signs of life in a waking city. So they come, the people of London, of the city yet dwelling beyond its walls. For on people does the city's life depend. Each one something in the city, all the city's wealth and strength. square mile, a maze of banks and business houses, structures of steel and stone, yet built because of money, wheat and wool, oil and ships. For these facades conceal the men and the work of one of the greatest financial centers of the world. For this city is a mark. A bathing place, a rendezvous where thousands trade in the things they seldom see. Where deals are made at a casual meeting, by the nod of a head or a penciled note. Where the nearness of office to market means money in the rush of business life. Here are the exchanges, centers of commerce operated by personal contacts. Vast, yet as intimate as the old coffee houses from which they grew. Most famous, perhaps, the Stock Exchange. Here a thousand deals are made within the hour, because the pace must keep in step with that of the whole world's business. The House, whose decisions and deals must then be flashed to every capital, so that the world can keep in step with London. Around the corner, the Baltic, the home of floating cargoes. Here, men of shipping, by word of mouth alone, affect the movement of a thousand vessels, from liners to tramps, from tugs to aircraft, 
the things they carry and the ports to which they sail. Then, that which grew from a coffee house run by one Edward Lloyd. Lloyd's of London. Save the town then, Gamble. Save having to raise a new song. Here, members quote insurance. Insurance for the ship, its cargo and its crew. Insurance against fire or theft or rain at the village fair. Such is the city of London, only a marketplace, but one dealing in the trade of the world. The city has long outgrown the things with which the city started. Today the pool that once held all the ships that came is only a part of the largest port in the world. In such a mighty stream of trade, so much must pass the city by. Yet more goods than ever before flow into the Thames side warehouses. Wine from Spain, Portugal and the Commonwealth. To be assessed for bouquet and quality. Tea from China, India and Ceylon. To be tasted and blended into a hundred grains. Furs by the shipload, beaver and mink, Persian lamb and Russian sable, skins from the world to be graded by experts, then to be auctioned in London, and then sold back to the world. For spices, cloth, or what you will, this is the place of experts. From importer to broker, from broker to dealer, each knows the worth of the product, and each knows his customer's need. For only thus are the best deals made. Lunchtime in the city, and a brief pause in the rush of trade, when the city becomes a place in which to take your ease, a place where past and present dwell together, united, indivisible.
head of a state within a state. For here, he is monarch over all except his kin. The host of visiting kings and foreign dignitaries. One of a line unbroken for 700 years. The Lord Mayor of London. Presiding at this, his common council. A parliament older than Westminster. Members, kindly take their places. Domine, dirige, note. The Court of Common Council is the city's own parliament, with powers unequaled in the kingdom. By its act, the Lord Mayor, Aldermen and Commons guide the affairs of their one square mile. At the Old Bailey, an alderman must sit at every session. Thus, the Common Council plays its part in the administration of justice. The City Constable is a member of an independent force, though working in unison with the National Police. Smithfield, Billingsgate, Spitalfields and Islington. The maintenance of these markets is the City's responsibility. Open spaces streets and sewers, for even after the Lord Mayor's show must come the Corporation Cleansing Department. But one task above all was the Common Council's purpose and is its aim, the perpetuation of all that is best of the city's historic past. The city is of the world and suffers with the world. But the city's true greatness, the integrity of its people, this has stood against all that the centuries have brought against it. Amid the bustle of the modern city, the old craft still linger on, living symbols of all that the city stands for, experience and fine workmanship, the skill that only years can bring, passed on from generation to generation, the skill of the craftsman, though working to live, yet in his heart, working for the love of it. By hammer and hand, all arts do stand. 1659. The city's guilds and companies of craftsmen are the direct survivals of the ancient trades of London. Their objects, fellowship, charity, and the guarding of quality. And the standards of the guilds are kept and assessed by craftsmen weighing, testing, and passing judgment so that only the best can bear the stamp, only the best can bear the hallmark. And in the hall of the guilds, the standards of all are protected by the council born of the guilds, by a democratic parliament stamping its acts of common council with its seal, the seal that symbolizes the best, the standards of eye and hand, of feel and touch, of taste and flavor. The seal of the city of London. These are the standards which have made this city the center of accepted craftsmanship, whether it be in the shaping of silver or in the deft handling of insurance. By apprenticeship and experience, each has learnt his trade. And integrity is a quality carefully guarded. Directors of the Baltic are voting for a would-be member by secret ballot, a method given by the city to the world. Each places a ball inside the box, dropping it into one of two compartments. Only if the vote is unanimous, can the candidate be accepted? Will the verdict be yea or nay? A 
and so another gains his right to trade, vouched for by his fellow craftsmen. So on the floors of the exchanges, business flows freely, for there each knows the other's integrity, for it has been measured and matched to his own. And there each must think well, for his too is the hallmark the stamp of the City of London. Standards and quality depend on people, lasting only because they will it. Through people, these things must last tomorrow. For in this ever-changing world, quality is wealth in.